Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Uh, DAPA is a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and Path Present, and designed to be an educational resource for uh, trainees in pathology, but also for others interested in discovering more about uh, pathologic diseases and uh, the uh, histology and other findings related to them. Our case today comes from the realm of bone pathology. It's a adolescent 17 year old who's had some progressive pain in his leg. Um, hasn't been severe or kept him up at night, but it's been uh, fairly continuous and uh, seems to be getting perhaps a little bit worse. Um, so that led to some radiographic studies and uh, here's a representative image from that uh, in which you can see that we have a fairly well-defined uh, lesion in the distal tibia, skeletally immature uh, a young person. Um, and this lesion is uh, lighter, it's a lytic, it's dissolving away some of the bony substance. It's got really quite sharp margins, as you see here, there's a little peripheral rim of uh, increased mineralization around the edge of it. Uh, it's somewhat irregular. Uh, and it's got a little bit of uh, cortical uh, changes, but the cortex, of course, is elevated uh, beyond that what would be normally expected. Um, and it's uh, occurring here in the uh, metaphysis of the bone. Uh, always a consideration to remember where you are in the bone. And of course, the metaphysis is a very busy location in terms of bone lesions. So with this radiographic appearance, you can imagine that our radiologists were immediately jumping on a number of possibilities. And when the radiologist looks at a lesion like this, uh, they're going to consider the sorts of things that might occur in this location, as well as the age group uh, in which uh, the uh, individual is uh, uh, presenting. Um, and uh, there are a number of uh, considerations that can cause somewhat expansile and lytic uh, lesions. If you think of all comers, you know, adults, children alike, uh, this uh, acronym, FOG Machines, has been advocated as a way of remembering all the various possibilities to be considered. Uh, I don't use those necessarily, and but maybe others will. But in an adolescent, I think uh, the things we're thinking about are uh, a number of uh, bone cysts, the unicameral cyst or aneurysmal bone cyst, uh, infection, abscesses uh, could cause this sort of a lesion. And then uh, we get into uh, cartilage forming lesions or, or giant cell tumor or uh, bone forming lesions like osteoblastoma, uh, and then occasionally other uh, lesions. The only significant difference between the adolescent and the adult population is the probably the frequency with which you might suspect metast metastasis. Um, uh, and fibrous dysplasia and so forth. So uh, those are those are the things that we're thinking about in this location. Uh, and so what will help us uh, differentiate these? Well, the radiologist is going to say, well, I'll get an additional study. And often they'll recommend an MRI. Uh, and in this case, the MRI was uh, virtually diagnostic because as you can see here on this uh, fluid weighted series, we have a very pronounced uh, uh, fluid uh, solid tissue level uh, in uh, this side, this lesion. Uh, as we've looked at it. And so that uh, very fairly clearly says that we've got dilated uh, spaces with uh, blood in them uh, where we can get, uh, you know, kind of fluid levels uh, that uh, mark this as uh, that kind of a lesion. Uh, so that leads them to suspect that this is an aneurysmal bone cyst. In fact, as we look at the tissue here, we can see the reason for that radiographic finding is these very dilated uh, spaces uh, that are essentially filled with blood, uh, most of them. And around the periphery, we can see we've got some uh, bone formation. We've got some newborn woven bone formation here um, and uh, a little bit of fibromyxoid tissue lining these uh, spaces. It's not very cellular. Um, uh, but as we look around, there are a few foci where we have a little bit of uh, increased uh, cellularity, such as right here. Um, where we see we have uh, some spindle-shaped cells and some admixed giant cells, as well as this sort of reactive uh, bony matrix that we've got here. And of course, this is the, the uh, area where you might say, well, do we have a secondary lesion here? Uh, is this a sarcoma? 
Um, and of course, the important things to differentiate here are the uh, malignant lesions uh, or those that are going to have the potential to recur. Um, and amongst those would be giant cell tumor, aneurysmal bone cysts, and other number of secondary uh, lesions as well. Um, so uh, this is uh, actually fairly characteristic in that in, in uh, aneurysmal bone cysts, you often will find areas of uh, somewhat cellular tissue like this with variable numbers of uh, giant cells. Um, and then these uh, ectatic spaces with some uh, peripheral mineralization or osteoid form formation. This does not look to be a neoplastic bone per se, as in an osteosarcoma or osteoblastoma. We've got a fair bit of uh, osteoblastic rimming around the edges of these uh, bony trabeculae as well. Um, now, uh, if you're interested in excluding a giant cell tumor or some of these other lesions, then uh, rarely you can use a particular immunohistochemical stain that may help you in that process. Um, and if you want to confirm uh, the diagnosis of uh, aneurysmal bone cyst, there also are some uh, fish tests or giant, uh, molecular genetic testing that can be uh, used as well. But this pattern of uh, kind of loose fibromyxoid tissue, some reactive bone, the uh, dilated cystic spaces, and occasional foci of cellular tissue with giant cells is quite characteristic. Now, just as a number of other examples, I've uh, included a few additional slides here for you to study uh, at your leisure. And of course, the link to these digital slides will be in the video description. Uh, but here you, again, you see some bony remodeling and this uh, hemorrhagic spaces with uh, some lining of uh, slightly cellular tissue with a scattered giant cell type process, sort of merging with a uh, more fibroblastic uh, response uh, a little bit further away from those cystic spaces. <clears throat> now, what is uh, challenging sometimes with aneurysmal bone cyst is that uh, it can occur as a secondary phenomenon in association with a number of other uh, lesions of the, the bone that also occur in these uh, locations. And so that creates a, a secondary form of aneurysmal bone cyst that is uh, also challenging. And that would be particularly the case in area, a sample like this, where you have a very cellular uh, tissue uh, with uh, dilated spaces. And uh, here we see, um, you know, lots of uh, cellular matrix uh, cells and the admix giant cells and so forth really very closely mimicking a, a giant cell tumor. Uh, and so the differential of these two lesions can be uh, extremely difficult, especially if the aneurysmal changes are relatively sparse, or if your uh, cellular uh, tissue such as this is uh, predominant. Um, so, uh, so let's just talk a little bit more about uh, kind of what the classic presentation of aneurysmal bone cyst is usually in skeletally immature individuals. So usually under 20, it's in the second decade of life, essentially. Uh, and these primary lesions are associated with a USP6 gene rearrangement, uh, which is uh, particularly helpful uh, in a number of cases uh, to define it as a primary lesion, as opposed to a secondary type of lesion where you might not have that particular molecular genetic finding. Uh, and those secondary lesions can include things like fibrous dysplasia, giant cell tumor, which I've mentioned, and then things like chondroblastoma, osteoblastoma, and even occasionally you may consider uh, the possibility that an aneurysmal, or excuse me, an uh, angio angioectatic type of uh, osteosarcoma could be uh, considered. Uh, the MRI is very useful if the fluid levels are present. And of course, this lesion does have a, a small risk of local recurrence but no metastatic potential. Uh, in terms of locations, um, cases can occur, uh, as you see, in the long bones, tibia, fibula. Uh, tibia is a little bit less common than the, the femur. Uh, pelvic bones, spine, ribs, uh, clavicle, uh, all of these uh, are possible sites, usually not in the uh, small bones of the hands or feet uh, or in the uh, calvarium. Uh, however, with that in mind, uh, the uh, family of tumors that have USP6 uh, gene rearrangements um, is growing. Uh, 
Um, and uh, in fact, there are a number of lesions with this rearrangement which do occur in the small bones, such as the giant cell lesion of small bones. Uh, but there are also a number of other seemingly benign uh, soft tissue lesions like nodular fasciitis or myositis ossificans um, that can occur. And also, again, there's fibrous, fiber osseous pseudotumor of the digits. Uh, so these are lesions that we're beginning to recognize in sort of multiple sites, multiple presentations that have this unifying uh, gene rearrangement uh, with variable partners. As you can see, the fusion genes with uh, aneurysmal bone cysts, quite an array, um, a smaller array with uh, nodular fasciitis and more limited partners uh, with myositis ossificans or fibroosseous pseudotumor of the digits. Uh, so uh, that's a nice unifying concept to keep in mind as you think about uh, these lesions uh, and also may at some point uh, down the road here lead to uh, the uh, advent of potentially non-surgical uh, treatments uh, for these uh, entities. So our diagnosis, final diagnosis today in this uh, young individual is aneurysmal bone cyst um, involving the uh, distal tibula, tibia. <laughs> Yeah, the tibula, that would be a good bone. Um, and uh, we hope that that uh, helps to enlighten your thinking about the differential of these lytic lesions and the uh, potential for primary versus secondary presentation. So thanks so much for joining me. And if you like this, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. We are always uh, eager to add to our uh, uh, number of videos that are out there and circulating uh, for educational uh, purposes. And we hope that they'll be useful to you and in your practice and subscribing helps to make sure that you uh, get notice of those uh, as soon as they uh, appear. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.